Before we are going to make a wireless sensor network using multiple NRF24 L01 modules, you will need to learn some basics which I have already explained in my previous tutorials. To keep things simple and easy to follow, I started with only two NRF24 L01 modules. In my first tutorial, I explained how to make a long range 12 volt battery voltage monitoring system using a pair of NRF24 L01 transceiver modules with the HC-05 Bluetooth module. I was able to monitor the voltage of a 12 volt battery using my Android cell phone application. In my second tutorial, I designed a long range industrial temperature monitoring system and this time instead of using the Android cell phone application, I displayed the temperature values on the OLED display module. In this project as well, I just used a pair of NRF24 L01 transceiver modules and only one temperature sensor. So all I want to say is that it's very simple to use a pair of NRF24 L01 transceiver modules and a single sensor. Things get a little complicated when it comes to multiple sensors connected with multiple NRF24 L01 modules. So I decided to make a third tutorial in which I explain the very basics explaining number one, the maximum number of NRF24 L01 modules that can be used in a wireless sensor network. Number two, how to monitor multiple sensors connected with multiple transmitters. This was based on the one-way communication. The two transmitters were communicating with a single receiver. D1 is the value coming from the transmitter number 1 and D2 is the value coming from the transmitter number 2. In this tutorial, I also explained how you can increase the number of transmitters. So I highly recommend first watch my previous three tutorials and then you can resume from here. To make a wireless sensor network using multiple NRF24 L01 transceiver modules, each sensor node in the wireless sensor network should be able to send and receive data from any other sensor node in the wireless network. At any sensor node in the wireless sensor network, you should know exactly from which sensor node you are receiving the data. Unique addresses are assigned to all the sensor nodes in the wireless sensor network, which are used to identify the sensor nodes. I will use the same circuits that I used in my previous tutorial. I have already explained the PCB designing and soldering. So first I started with only two NRF24 L01 modules. This is the base node 00 to which you can see an I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD is connected. I have also connected a potentiometer. I will use this potentiometer to control this servo motor which is connected with the sensor node 01. To the node 01, I have also connected a potentiometer. I will send its value to the node 00 and then I will display the value on the 16 into 2 LCD module. Node 01 belongs to the level 1 in the wireless sensor network. As explained in my previous tutorial, in level 1 you can have maximum of 6 NRF24 L01 modules. So if you want to aid another sensor node in level 1 simply copy and paste the code and change the node address to node 02. Anyhow you can see I can send the value of potentiometer from node 01 to node 00 which is displayed on the I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD. As I'm using an array in the programming so you can connect multiple sensors and store the values at different locations in the array. I will explain this in the programming section. The potentiometer connected with the base node 00 can be used to control the servo motor which is connected with the node 01. You can see the response time is too fast. This is just because I'm not using any delays in the programming. After performing the tests and once satisfied with the results, I decided to bring in the level 2 to complete my wireless sensor network. If we can send data from the node 011 to the node 01 and base node 00 and if we can also send data from the base node 00 to the node 01 and node 011 
then we can do it for all the sensor nodes in the wireless sensor network. This is the base node 0, 0. This is the sensor node 0, 1. And this is the sensor node 0, 1, 1. With the base node 0, 0, I have connected a potential meter and an LED. With the sensor node 0, 1, I have connected a potential meter and also a servo motor. With the sensor node 0, 1, 1, I have connected a push button and a servo motor. The potential meter which is connected with the base node 0, 0 can be used to control the servo motor which is connected with the node 0, 1. The potentiometer connected with the sensor node 01 can be used to control the servo motor connected with the sensor node 011. I can also control both the servo motors at the same time. The push button connected with the sensor node 011 can be used to control the LED connected with the base node 00. As the LED control signal from the sensor node 011 goes to the base node 00 through the sensor node 01, so if I turn off the node 01, the communication will stop. So to control the LED and the servo motors, the sensor node 01 should always remain on. I kept performing the tests. The response time of the servo motors was simply amazing. The response time of the array was also great. Although the control signal was going through the sensor node 01, still I didn't feel any delay. You can add more sensor nodes using the same technique. The only thing that you will need to do is to change the node addresses, which I will explain in the programming. So now you know exactly what you are going to learn after watching this video. Without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. I have already explained the wireless sensor network topology in my previous tutorial. I will provide a link in the description. Now let's take a look at the circuit diagrams. This is the circuit diagram of the node 00. A potentiometer is connected with the analog pin A0. A decoupling capacitor of 10 microfarad is connected with the VCC and ground pins of the NRF24L01 transceiver module. The VCC and ground pins are connected with the Arduino's 3.3 volt and ground pins. CE is connected with pin 9. CSN is connected with pin 10. SCK is connected with 13. MOSI is connected with pin 11. And the MISO pin is connected with pin 12 of the Arduino. I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD. SCL and SDA pins are connected with the Arduino's analog pins A5 and A4, while the VCC and ground pins of the LCD module are connected with the Arduino's 5 volt and ground. This is the circuit diagram of the node 01. The NRF24L01 and potentiometer connection with the Arduino remains exactly the same. 
The signal wire of the servo motor is connected with the PWM pin 5 of the Arduino, while the power supply pins of the servo motor are connected with the 5 volt and ground. For the best performance, you can add a decoupling capacitor with the power supply pins of the servo motor. I connected all the electronics as per the circuit diagram. I have already explained the PCB designing and soldering in my previous tutorial. Our circuits are ready for the programming. Now let's take a look at the programming of the node 00 and node 01. As usual, before you start the programming, first of all, make sure you download all the necessary libraries from our website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. This code is written for the node 00 and this code is written for the node 01. So let's take a look at the node 00 programming. Maximum of the code I have already explained in my previous tutorial. These are the node addresses. I defined this array for storing the sensor values. In my case, I store the potentiometer value. I will store the potentiometer value at location 0 in the data array. You can connect more sensors and store the values at locations 1, 2, 3 and so on. If you want to use more sensors, simply increase the array size. The variables data1 and data2 are used to store the values coming from the node 01. Rest of the programming is exactly the same as explained in my previous tutorial. I'm using the same data receive function and the same sensor one send function. This time I only mapped the values as per the server motor. I'm also using the same LCD display function which I'm using to display the potentiometer value received from the node 01. Now let's take a look at the node 01 programming. The node 01 programming is exactly the same. The only modification is the addition of the server motor. In the data receive function, I used an if condition to check if the data is received from the node 00 and then used the received data to control the angle of the server motor. Everything else remains exactly the same. I have already uploaded the two programs. Let's watch the NRF24L01 based two-way communication system. This is not a network but a wireless two-way communication system based on the NRF24L01 transceiver modules. The reason I started with only two NRF24L01 modules is to help you easily understand the two-way communication. So after successfully transmitting and receiving the data, now it's time to make a wireless sensor network using multiple NRF24L01 transceiver modules. I will do it only for the three nodes but you can increase the number of nodes in the same way as I'm about to add another node 011. Node 00 remains exactly the same. This time I connected an LED with pin number 2 of the Arduino. Node 01 remains exactly the same. I did no changes. Node 011 is just like the node 01. This time I replaced the potentiometer with a push button. Now let's take a look at the programming. The codes are pretty much the same. Let's take a look at the code of node 01 which is the intermediate node as the data communication between the node 00 and node 011 takes place through this node. As you can see this time I added another node 011. I also added another data array. Everything else remains exactly the same. In the sensor1 send function, I am sending the data to node 00 and also to node 011. Inside the data receive function, I use two if conditions. The first if condition checks if the data is received from the node 00, which is used to control the servo motor. While the second if condition is used to check if the data is received from the node 011 which is equal to 9 and decimal. We read the button state which is stored at location 2 in the data array and store it in data2 variable. Then we store this value in the other data array at location 3 and send it to the node 00 
where it is used to control the LED. You can use the same code to make another node. You will only need to change the addresses as per your requirement. I have already uploaded these three programs. Let's watch the NRF24L01 modules based wireless sensor network in action. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.